Ubuntu Linux, easily the most popular Linux distribution on the planet. Why is it so popular? Today I'm going to cover the top five reasons to run Ubuntu. So the top five reasons to run Ubuntu easily. The number one reason why most people choose to run Ubuntu is number one. Ubuntu is built with the new user in mind. Unlike most Linux distros, most Linux distros are really built for developers, sysadmins, you know, programmers. Um, Ubuntu was really the first Linux distro that was geared toward your average mainstream computer user. You know, something that your parents could use, your grandparents could use, the neighbor next door could use. Um, they really... I mean, the one of the early slogans for Ubuntu was Ubuntu Linux for human beings, because before Ubuntu, Linux was mainly seen as a server operating system. It's not something you install on a desktop or a laptop and live in. But when Ubuntu came on the scene in 2004, and certainly by the time they got the ball rolling around 2006, 2007, full steam ahead, uh, Ubuntu was really known as a very, very new user-friendly Linux distribution, something we didn't have a lot of before Ubuntu. As a matter of fact, we didn't have much of that at all. Uh, maybe things like uh, Mandrake were kind of easy, but, you know, before that, I mean, you were talking, you know, some of those early Red Hat versions, Slackware, you know, things like that. Not exactly new user-friendly. Uh, Ubuntu mastered the easy install. They were really the first ones to give you that... Uh, that installer where basically you click OK three or four times and you're done in 15 minutes. That was the Ubuntu installation. In many ways, even those very early versions of Ubuntu, the installation of uh, you know the Ubuntu's back in you know 2006, 2008 were easier than installing Windows back then, and now even easier. Now it's gotten to the point where it's still that three or four times you click OK and you're done in, you know, 15 minutes. But on modern hardware, you know, sometimes the installs are under 10 minutes for the, uh, a lot of these versions of Ubuntu with modern CPUs. Uh, proprietary drivers and codecs are also installed. Uh, it's just a simple checkbox in the installer, something that those very early Ubuntus did not do. But sometime around, I don't know, 2010 or so, you know, Ubuntu started including proprietary graphics drivers, multimedia codecs as an option in the installer. So really, you know, you click OK three or four times and in 15 minutes, you have a desktop operating system that is ready to go out of the box. You know, a suite of, uh, of programs for, you know, most popular uh, desktop applications. You know, you have your Office Suite and you know, your web browser, text editor, you, you have your software center, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Ubuntu, again, it, it built with the new user in mind, graphical user interface, GUI tools were provided for everything, still are. Um, you really don't have to drop down into a, a command line or a shell prompt or open up a terminal emulator for anything in Ubuntu if you choose not to. You have graphical tools for installing and removing software, updating the system, adding and remove, removing users, you know, things that really before Ubuntu and even after Ubuntu, still many distributions, those things I just named, you have to open up a terminal on a lot of distros to do those tasks that, you know, Ubuntu users kind of take for granted because they have such easy to use graphical user interfaces for these kinds of things. Um, of course, it's built with the new user in mind. Let's talk about stability. New users, they want ultra-stable distros. That's what they need anyway. You know, they don't need things that break because the new user, if something breaks, they're going to have absolutely no idea how to fix it. Ubuntu offers what they call their LTS releases, their long-term support releases. So every two years, they release a new LTS, long-term support release. And these are based on Debian Stable, which is a very stable distribution in itself. And Ubuntu bases the LTS releases off of Debian Stable and, you know, adds some, some extra stuff to it. You know, some little Ubuntu spice to it as well. But the LTS releases are rock solid, stable, perfect for the brand new to Linux user. Also, user interface, 
Ubuntu, the Ubuntu team really takes a, a lot of time and effort to provide a nice user interface, a nice user experience uh, for the desktop user. Of course, for a long time, mainline Ubuntu used its own desktop environment that they called uh, Unity, which was very focused on user interface, and it was very new user friendly. It was very easy to use. Even somebody that's never seen it before could sit down and figure out how to use Unity pretty quickly. Even now that the mainline Ubuntu has switched to the GNOME shell, they've spent a lot of time adding some custom extensions to GNOME to make the GNOME user interface a lot more friendlier to the new to Linux user. Uh, even the other Ubuntu flavors, the official Ubuntu flavors, flavors like Ubuntu Mate, for example, spend a lot of time on user interface stuff, uh, customization. They add a lot of really neat tools to help the new user uh, set up their desktop exactly the way they want it, you know, whether they want it to mimic the, the Windows workflow or the Mac workflow or what have you, even the old Unity workflow from the older versions of uh, mainline Ubuntu that ship with Unity. So, Again, the number one reason why most people would choose to run Ubuntu is that it is built with the new user in mind. And reason number two in my top five reasons to run Ubuntu. Ubuntu has the largest user base. By far, Ubuntu has probably more users as far as desktop Linux than maybe all other Linux distributions combined. It's hard to say. Uh, there's no good metrics on that, but what we do know is for sure Ubuntu has more users than any other uh, Linux desktop distro. Uh, what does that mean? I mean, is user base everything? No, of course not. But because Ubuntu's user base is so large, that does give it some advantages uh, over other distros. For example, support. Their forums, the UbuntuForums.org uh, website, or is it UbuntuForums.com? I forget. The official Ubuntu forums. There's also the AskUbuntu.com Stack Exchange. There's, of course, on the Free Node Network, the official Ubuntu IRC support channel, etc., uh, etc. Et There's several Ubuntu uh, support channels out there. They're very active. Ubuntu has a massive user base, tens of millions of users, maybe hundreds of millions. Who, who knows how many people actually use Ubuntu uh, on the desktop, though? Well, tens of millions of users if we leave out, you know, server installs and such. Anyway, you go to these support channels. They're very, very active. Thousands of people hanging out there waiting for people to post questions and to give you an answer quickly. Uh, you're much more likely, for example, to get a... Uh, question answered on an Ubuntu IRC channel than Joe Bob's garage distro that he created last week, him and three of his buddies. And, you know, maybe they got, you know, 10 other people to use their distro other than them. Ubuntu's very large user base, again, it gives it some major advantages over all the other distros out there. More users also means more bug reports. More bug reports hopefully means more bug fixes. Uh, the large user base means that Ubuntu probably is going to support more hardware than just about any distro out there uh, because of their very large user base. Hardware manufacturers want to make sure, if they choose to support Linux at all, they want to make sure for sure that their hardware runs on Ubuntu. And of course, Ubuntu, as a very large company behind it, uh, Canonical, they want to make sure that their distro runs on as much hardware as possible as well. Also, the very large user base uh, being very popular means software. Uh, if somebody packages a piece of software for Linux, if they're going to only support one distro out there, it's probably going to be Ubuntu. It, it just makes sense, right? More people run Ubuntu than anything else. So if you're going to package your, your, your software for one distro only, you're going to probably package it for Ubuntu. You're going to make a dev package for Ubuntu, which also works on all the Ubuntu flavors, all the Ubuntu spinoffs, plus a dev package. Hopefully runs on Debian as well and all the Debian spinoffs. Uh, increasingly, because Ubuntu is pushing the snap pack format, you know, you're getting a lot more companies now creating snaps, which is great because, of course, that will, of course, run on Ubuntu and all the Ubuntu spinoffs, but it will also run on any distro because snap packages are distro agnostic as long as you have system d as your init system uh, pr proprietary software is a big one right uh, proprietary software things like google chrome you know you're going to find a dev package uh, all that third-party software again pretty easy to find something 
that works on Ubuntu for that kind of stuff. All right, and reason number three in my top five reasons to run Ubuntu. Sudo over Su. Now, this is, you know, a little bit of a, kind of a wild card. This is not something most people would throw in a top five reasons to run Ubuntu. But, but for me in particular, and this is kind of a personal list for me, this is a compelling reason. Sudo over Su. What is Sudo and what is Su? So on most Linux distros, certainly most Linux distros before Ubuntu came around, to do anything as root with root privileges, you know, you opened up a terminal and you typed SU, which means switch user. You hit enter and now you are logged in as the root user after you give the root password, of course. With sudo, uh, you no longer have to have a root user on the system, or at least not a root user that's given a password. You can use your standard user. For example, my username on my computers is DT. So I open up a terminal, and as the DT user, I can type sudo and then any command I want, and it will execute with root privileges as long as I give uh, the correct password. Uh, what is the advantages of this? Well... It is kind of nice not to have to switch users, SU, uh, for things that you need to do one time, you know, with sudo privileges, with root privileges. Uh, also, it's a little bit safer, in my opinion, than using SU, because when you use SU, you open up a terminal, you type SU, give the root password, and now you're the root, root user in the terminal. And a lot of times people just stay in that root user in the terminal. You just execute everything as a SU, and that is dangerous. Sudo, the only thing that executes as root are the uh, commands you typed sudo in front of and, you know, gave the sudo password for. So all actions requiring root permission can be done with a regular user invoking sudo. No root user password means no one can break into that user for so security reasons. The root user can't be broken into because if he doesn't have a password, you can't hack the password. <laughs> so uh, also because you have to type sudo before every command that you want to use root privileges with. Hopefully sudo forces you to think before you leap on some of these dangerous commands you might be typing. That, I admit, might be a little bit of a stretch because e even though you... You, I can do su in the terminal and then just willy-nilly type anything in the terminal. You can do that with sudo, too. I know a lot of people just copy-paste things on the terminal, sudo commands, and don't really think about it. But in theory, sudo should force you to, to think before you leap. And reason number four in my top five reasons to run Ubuntu. Ubuntu comes in eight flavors. Now, what I'm talking about here is, okay, we have mainline Ubuntu, Ubuntu now with the GNOME shell as their default desktop, but Ubuntu also has seven other what they call official flavors of Ubuntu. What are those? Well, again, mainline Ubuntu, which has GNOME now as the default desktop. I say now because previously mainline Ubuntu used the Unity desktop, their own custom desktop environment that they called Unity, but they've since abandoned that and moved to GNOME as their default desktop environment. But other than mainline Ubuntu, you, of course, you have Kubuntu, which has KDE Plasma as the default desktop environment, which is a really nice uh, desktop environment, especially for those coming from Windows. I think they would be very comfortable with KDE Plasma. You have Zubuntu with the XFCE desktop environment, which is kind of a lightweight desktop environment. Great for older machines. Kind of uh, mimics some of the older versions of Windows. I think people that were familiar with things like XP and certainly Windows versions older than that would be fine with the Zubuntu workflow. You have Lubuntu, which is an even lighter weight Ubuntu flavor. It uses the LXQt desktop environment now as its default desktop. I say now once again because previous versions of Lubuntu used LXDE as their default desktop, but starting with 18.10, which should be out sometime in October, Lubuntu will now use the LXQt desktop environment as the default desktop environment. Some other flavors of Ubuntu include Ubuntu Mate with the Mate desktop, Ubuntu Budgie with the Budgie desktop, Ubuntu Chillin' 
or Kylin, I'm not exactly sure how they pronounce that. I think they pronounce it Chillin. It's a Chinese-centric Ubuntu, uh, so it's geared toward the Chinese market. And, of course, we have Ubuntu Studio, which is geared toward multimedia development. So Ubuntu comes in eight flavors, eight official flavors. And the fifth and final reason in my top five reasons to run Ubuntu and again, I'm going to throw you another little curveball here because this one is not about the desktop at all. Ubuntu server is easy too. This is number five in my top five reasons to run Ubuntu. Ubuntu is making the server easier too. For example, I can tell you from my own personal experience, uh, web servers, setting up a LAMP stack on Ubuntu is super easy. Uh, Ubuntu has this fantastic tool, you know, this command line tool, you open up a terminal and they have this tool called task selector, T-A-S-K-S-E-L. Type that in the terminal and then that thing gives you some options of, you know, various term, uh, server software that you might want to install on your Ubuntu system. One of them is a LAMP stack option where it installs a full LAMP st stack for you. LAMP, by the way, stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. You just click that thing and it, it, it puts all that on your system. Also, a lot of it's just already pre-configured. No playing with, you know, the Apache config, for example, like I, I have to do on certain other Linux distros. It just works. Setting up a web server on Ubuntu server is just crazy easy. Recently, I've been playing a little bit with Nextcloud. Nextcloud has become very popular. Nextcloud is a uh, basically, basically a self-hosting uh, cloud service. So you have a web server, or you can even do it, you know, on your own personal machine, maybe do something on localhost. You install Nextcloud, you want Nextcloud up and running really quick. How, how about doing this? Sudo snap install Nextcloud. You're done. Why? Because snap packages, of course, are these containerized packages that also include all the dependencies needed for that package, right? So sudo snap install nextcloud installs nextcloud and all the dependencies needed to run nextcloud, which includes a LAMP stack, for example. So, you know, it's going to install the Apache server and all that in the snap with nextcloud. Pre-configured. Done. Uh, all you need to do is open up a web browser, go to whatever domain you've got nextcloud uh, set up for, and that's it. Piece of cake. So number five, Ubuntu server is easy. So just a quick recap of the top five reasons to run Ubuntu. Number one, it's built with the new user in mind. Number two, Ubuntu has the largest user base. Number three, sudo over su. Number four, Ubuntu comes in eight official flavors. And number five, Ubuntu server is easy too. And of course, before I go, I need to give a special thanks to all my patrons, all my Patreon supporters. I'm talking about A.K. Allen, Alex, Ansem, Tony, Bart, Benjamin, Ben, Bill, Bruno, Brian, Carlos, Christian, Chuck, Dan, the other Dan, Daniel, David, the other David, Dirk, Eduardo, Francisco, Greg, you made Interceptor, Jake, John, Carl, Katrina, Keith, Leo, Marcus, the other Marcus, Mateo, Mark, Martin, Matthias, Michael, Mr. GFY, Mr. Smarty Pants, Mr. Neely Pops, Paul, Rob, Robert, Ryan, Sylvia, First Stephen, Second Stephen, Third Stephen, Swami, Tiedemann, Voice Live, Tubella, and John. You guys rock. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys.